Hey folks, um, I was just shoveling the, uh, the walkway of the church, so if I happen to grab my left arm and fall down, you'll know why. Uh, <clears throat> we had some snow last night. Anyway, when I was out there, I was shoveling, something else occurred to me that I wanted to share with you. So President-elect Joe Biden's Deputy Chief of Staff in a recent interview used some pretty colorful language to describe Republicans. And apparently there's some Republicans out there that are pretty offended by this. They're, they do not like that kind of language. They don't think there's any call for it. It's not professional. It's so on and so forth. Personally, that kind of language doesn't bother me. I, I grew up in the Maritimes, um, a, a culture of sailors and lumberjacks and fishermen and farmers and you know, with the French and the English, <clears throat> I've literally worked with people who couldn't speak any English except for swear words. And I mean literally. And so having a conversation with them was always quite interesting. But what I really want to talk about today isn't necessarily swearing, it's hypocrisy. Because for those Republicans, in particular, one person, Marco Rubio out of Florida, he really, made, he really made it a point to express his, his dismay with the choice of language. And, and I believe he's a Christian. He's continuously posting, uh, he's continuously posting scripture on his, on his Twitter account, so I'm going to assume he, he's a person of faith. And so if he wants to be offended by it, that's, that's his right. The problem is, is that he only seems offended by it when it's somebody from the Democrats who are using it. He didn't express this same outrage um, when members of his own caucus, members of his own party, were calling people names. Uh, he didn't express this same outrage when people use colorful language. The president uses colorful language to describe something. So what ends up happening is now his voice just gets added to the chorus of of hypocrites out there in the world who are pointing at other people saying, you're horrible, you're doing this wrong, you're doing this bad, you are a bad person for this. They're not acting as people of integrity. It's okay to be offended by it. It's normal to be offended by it. It's natural to be offended by it. It's your choice to be offended by it. Where you don't have that choice, however, is when it comes to selection. If you're offended by that word, if you're offended by a curse word, it, you must be offended by it regardless of who says it. You must be. Otherwise, you add your voice to the chorus of hypocrites. In the Bible, there's that famous, judge not lest ye be judged. Well, there's a reason for that. Whenever we judge somebody, we basically set up a standard. All right, okay, so I'm judging you, you did a bad thing. Well, I've just literally drawn a line. And I've said, a person shouldn't cross that line. Well, as a person, it means I shouldn't cross that line. And maybe it's one of those things that I won't do, right? I, I am offended by this, and therefore, I won't do that kind of thing. But whenever we start pointing and looking around and deciding that this person is doing a bad thing and that person is doing a bad thing, and we start drawing all these lines, what ends up happening is, we encircle ourselves with them. And then soon, soon that, that, that encirclement of, of the standards that we've created, it, it grows inward. Right? It grows inward. And what ends up happening is soon we don't have any room to move. We don't have any room to breathe. And we lose what it is we're promised, which is freedom. We become enslaved to the standards that we've set if we're genuine in it. In Galatians, Paul actually, I'm reading Galatians right now, Paul actually in it talks about, you know, Jesus came to free you. Why do you keep falling back on old traditional ways? He came to free you from that stuff. Well, Jesus comes to free us from all those judgments that are based on our bias, that are based on our opinion. And the truth is, this is something for all of us to reflect on. It's not just if, you know, those fellows wearing the red pointing at the people in blue who said something wrong. It's also us who are on the left pointing at the right. The trick is just don't point. 
Now, I know somebody out there is going to say, yeah, but, but nothing. Just don't point, right? We are allowed to be angry when somebody does something that is wrong. We are allowed to have the opinion. The issue isn't having the opinion. The issue is when the opinion is focused on a particular group of people, when it's focused outward and not inward. So Marco Rubio, you don't like using that word. That's fine. Make sure you don't ever use it. I'm okay that you don't like that word. I'm okay that you don't like swearing. Make sure you don't use it. I'm okay that you don't like colorful language. Next time one of your compatriots uses that kind of language, make sure you point it out. The next time your president uses that kind of language, point it out. The next time your associates, your partners, the next time your colleagues in Senate and Congress use that kind of language, be sure to point it out. That's all. If you're going to draw the line, that line exists for everyone, including yourself. Personally, I do my best to simply not draw the lines. Because I don't know when the next time I'm going to stub my toe is. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And may you always know the peace of living in the Lord's presence. I pray pray that you will allow others to live as you want them to allow you to live. Amen.